Good morning. There's an echo in here. Nice to be with you this morning. I uh, trust that God will encourage your heart with the word this morning. We've all been through a tough season, and uh, I trust that it'll uh, get better in the next little while. It strikes me that there's been two COVID tests given. One by the health workers to determine if you uh, have the COVID virus. And the other one, I believe, has been given to God's people by God himself. And it's a test of discipleship, really. And Jesus said, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The COVID test from God this last year and a half has been, can you love people who have a different opinion than you? I uh, work a lot with pastors and I've heard a steady stream of heartbreak over this last year. People who have turned their backs on relationship and churches divided, all kinds of things happening. And I just encourage you as uh, we trust this is winding down, but what's in your heart? Have you passed the COVID test from God? If not, listen to the Spirit of God and make things right, should they need to be made right. I've titled my message this morning, Hidden Dreams, Hidden Dreams. Some of you are sitting here today with hidden dreams. Dreams only you know about or the person sitting beside you may have hidden dreams. And I want to talk about two ways to bless those you love. And the focus really is on helping them see the reality of godly dreams that God has given them. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 8. This is a story from the life of Elisha. Elisha has been called the prophet of abundant life. And in the ministry of Elisha, if you take time to study it, you will see foreshadowing of our Lord Jesus Christ who was sent to bring you and me abundant life. But one of the things, one of the aspects of Elisha's ministry was to help a person with a hidden dream. But we're gonna see two aspects of that in this text, so if you'll read with me from 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 8. One day Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in it a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay there. And he said to his servant Gehazi, call the Shunammite. So he called her and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her, Elisha asked Gehazi said, she has no son and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, call her. So he called her and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. Two ways to bless those you love. My mom is uh, in the senior's home, and uh, this whole lockdown has had some pretty tough effects on her mentally been really tough but before the lockdown I had my best conversation I ever had with my mom in terms of heart expressions 
And one of the things my mom told me during that time was that she had a regret that she hadn't pursued a dream. That dream was really to develop her artwork. She had made many paintings, and, and then all of a sudden she just kind of stopped. But one of those paintings, actually, my wife, we, we received, and my wife framed it. It's in our house, very meaningful to me. But what my mom said is that she had dreamed, she wished she had pursued that dream of her artwork and taken it to the maximum that it could have gone. I didn't realize that all through the years, she was someone I loved, someone our family loved, of course, but we didn't realize that she had a hidden dream. How do you bless people you love? Well, there's a couple ways in this text. The first one is you can bless them by helping them fulfill their spoken dreams. We see this in verse 9. She said to her husband, I know this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put it in a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay whenever he comes to us. The Shudamite lady was a woman who was kingdom oriented. She was a person who sought first the kingdom of God. And But she had this dream to be a blessing to Elisha, the, the prophet. And of course, Elisha was a traveling prophet. He would go from place to place, and he would need places to stay along the way. And one time, they had him over for supper to encourage him, and they had a great time together. And so she had this dream of saying, let's build a room for him so he can stay here. Whenever he comes by, it'll be a blessing to him. And no doubt she's thinking, we'll have a blessing of his fellowship. And so she had this spoken dream. She, she, it was a godly dream. It was a good thing. It was a thing that advanced the kingdom of God. And she spoke it out. Well, we don't have privy to the conversation she had with her husband, but we do know that he obviously said, yes, dear, we've got the resources. Let's build that room. Because in the next scene in the story, we see Elisha staying in the room. But we learn from that that her husband loved her by helping her fulfill this spoken dream. It was a dream that was noble. It was a dream that is right. It was a dream that would bring blessing to others. I think she pictured them having times of fellowship and encouragement, all that taking place in their house. I think she had a picture in her mind of what it would look like, what this room would look like, and what the fellowship would look like. By the way, a lot of times we have pictures in our mind. That's a sign of a, often a sign that we have this dream. And God speaks through dreams in, that he gives people. You see that in the scripture with Abram and Joseph and so on. But she had this dream. And this dream was achievable with current resources. Her husband had the cash in the bank. Well, they probably didn't have a bank, but he had the cash. She had the dream, and he had the resources to help that dream be fulfilled. And he loved his wife by helping her fulfill that dream. He used his resources to help with someone else's dream. There's some folks who live in Sexsmith that have been a help to our ministry at Refresh Ministries. They developed a basement suite for, to have pastors stay for free. It's uh, Jonathan and Barb Silgico. And they actually call the basement suite Elisha's room after this story here. But they're using their resources that helps me in carrying out the purposes I have, but also it's a part of their dream as well. But they've used their resources to help someone fulfill the dream. Let me ask you, the people around you, the people you love, are there some that have a dream? that they're willing to talk about. And you have the resources to help. One way you can love them is by sharing your resources to help them fulfill that godly dream. But the second way you can bless those is by helping them discover and fulfill their unspoken dreams. This lady had two dreams. One she would be willing to talk about and one she did everything she could to avoid talking about. By the way, well, I'll just read verse 11. It says, One day Elisha came and he went to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, Call a Shunammite. So he called her. And she stood before him. Elisha said, Tell her. 
You've gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? And she said, I have a home among my people. What she's saying there is, I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good. I'm content. Deep in her heart, there was something else going on. But there was no way she was going to answer this question. So they kind of did some detective work, and Gehazi, the servant, said, well, you know what? She doesn't have a child. And that was the dream of every lady was to have a child. And uh, so Elijah or Elisha calls her and says, a year from now, you're going to have a son. You're going to hold a son in your arms. Why do dreams go unspoken? I've spent a lot of time talking with people through the years, and I've discovered that almost everyone has an unspoken dream. Do you have an unspoken dream? And a lot of times, even those closest to us are not aware of it. She is going along in her life. A lot of things are going well for her, but she will not even talk about this unspoken dream. And I think there's some reasons for that that we see in the text, why we keep our dreams covered. One is your dream may be covered because of misconceptions. This lady had a lot of stuff going her way. Her life was filled with a lot of blessing. She was, uh, you know, a person of means. And uh, she obviously had financial resources there, a lot of things going well for her. And I'm wondering if maybe she thought she had reached the limit of God's blessing in her life. You know, as you see the story before this in the text in, in this chapter, is a story of a widow who lost her husband, who was well into debt and was going to lose her sons to slavery. And God intervened. And this lady was no doubt thinking, well, I haven't lost my husband. There's, we are far from debt. And uh, you know what? Things are going well. How, how could God want to do something for me? I wonder if she had misconceptions about that. You know, I found through the years that people have a lot of misconceptions about God. And these misconceptions keep them from realizing their dream. Recently, I've been working with a, a missionary who has had a stellar career in serving God. But in our talks, confessed, I do not enjoy prayer. Can you imagine a person who's been a missionary all their life, coming close to retirement, and they say, I do not enjoy prayer. This person shared it with their spouse, and their spouse was absolutely shocked. But what we found is that this person had developed some misconceptions about God. They believed, tangibly, that God would only want to spend time with them if they were praying about advancing the kingdom. None of this just heart-to-heart -heart sharing and enjoying a friendship. She's had a dream for years of having a great prayer life and enjoying the presence of God tangibly, day by day. And what was standing in the way was a misconception about God himself. We've been dealing with that, and this whole dream of hers is now starting to come. I bet some of you sitting here have misconceptions about God that are holding you back. Well, there's another reason that we see here, and that is to, that it was, uh, it was covered by layers of impossibility. What can be done for her, Elisha asked. Gehazi said, well, she has no son and her husband is old. The situation makes it impossible for this dream to be fulfilled. One of the things we do at our ministry is we have an online teaching once a month. Lately, we've been going through the life of Elisha. We call it uh, 10 Laws of Ministry. And one of the couples that comes online from Africa is very divergent in age, a much older man and a much younger lady. But that's a very much the norm in many cultures, and that was the norm here, but it made for it some impossibilities in their life. And so uh, it was covered over with layers of impossibility. 
the ability for this dream to be fulfilled is long gone. The time has passed. And so she had stopped dreaming. And the third thing about her dream, it was covered over by layers of pain. No, my Lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. If some, you had a dream and, and the prophet says to you, it's going to come true. A year from now, your dream is going to be fulfilled. And her response is, don't even talk about it. Don't even get my hopes up. This just hurts too much to even talk about it. The hope had been disappointed so many times. It was too painful to talk about. Some of you have dreams that you believe are godly dreams. And the hope has been disappointed. And you don't even want to talk about it anymore. Well, someone sitting near you today, someone in the realm of your relationships may actually have unspoken dreams. How do you help them? One is um, Holy Spirit-led questions can help uncover the dream. Elisha talks to this lady and says, what can be done for you? And he says, shall I talk to the king for you? Shall I talk to the commander of the army? The two most powerful people in the nation said, I, can, I got connections. I can help you out. <laughs> So he starts asking questions. Of course, she doesn't want to answer the questions, and so it's through observation that they realize what her dream really is. But Holy Spirit-led questions. God may put on your heart to ask people in the circle of your relationships Holy Spirit-led questions. to Find out what that dream is. Secondly, bring the power of God into the situation. Share a Spirit-led word. It says, then Elijah said, call her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elijah says, you will hold a son in your arms. The Holy Spirit gave Elisha a word for this lady. It was a word that shattered her misconceptions about God. It was a, a word that broke through the layers of her disappointment. And through the, the, the layers of impossibility. A year from now, you will hold a son in your arms. Well, a spirit-led word often happens through preaching, and that's why I say, encourage people to go to church. Often the Spirit of God will just use the Word of God and speak into our lives. We see all through Scripture God using a word to encourage people. Everyone from Abraham and others, of course, where God spoke and gave a promise so that their godly dream would come to pass. One time, when I was pastor, uh, there was a man in our congregation who uh, developed prostate cancer. And it was very severe. In fact, uh, the doctor said, you probably have about three months here. It was progressing rapidly. And uh, so they asked the elders to come and pray for him. And we went and prayed and... and uh, it was coming to closing our prayer time, and I had this manual before me which gave verses of Scripture to close the, the time of prayer with. And there was two verses there. And one of the verses was kind of like, well, God will give you grace in this suffering. And the other one was like, God's going to do something really big here. And I was looking at those verses, and the other guys are praying, and I'm looking at my manual, and I was saying, Lord, which one of these do you want me to use? And the prompting on my heart was to use the one that talked about something dramatic. So I read that verse and we closed. And as we were leaving, one of the elders said to me, well, that was uh, quite a scripture you shared there. Basically, you say you had a lot of guts to share that. But you know, as far as I'm aware, that person has moved on, but I believe that person is still alive today. That person loved to ride motorcycles. I believe they did a cross-Canada trip on their motorcycle. Sometimes God will give you a word for someone. I could tell you a, a number of stories from my life when people came up and just said something and that was such a confirmation to help me along the way of my godly dreams. Sometimes God will give you a word. And sometimes we can bring God in also through our prayers. 
Later in this story, this child who was prophesied, of course, was born, and he, as he was growing up, he uh, suddenly had a bad headache one day, and he actually died, and, and again, the Shunammite woman calls on Elisha, and he comes and he prays, and it's through prayer that that child is brought back to life. We can bring God in by our prayers. If you look <clears throat> in the New Testament, there's a great story of this. And it happens in Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 13. It's the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist. And of course, they were godly people serving and so on. But uh, they were barren. Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years, okay? So there's a disappointed dream. There's the impossibilities. And one day, Zechariah is uh, serving in the temple, and all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord stands before him and says, Zechariah, your prayers have been answered. Your wife is going to have a child. And of course, he argues, and so on. But that phrase is very important and instructive to us. The angel said, your prayers have been answered. Third person singular. Zechariah, your prayers as a husband, for your wife, have been answered. We can bring God in to help people fulfill their impossible dreams through our prayers. You can bless those you love by helping them realize godly dreams. Some of you sitting here are aware of people in your circle of love that have spoken about dreams that they have. They're godly dreams. And you, like the Shudamite woman's husband, have resources to help them on the way. One of the ways you can love people is by releasing your resources to help them fulfill godly dreams. But as sure as you are sitting here today, I know that many of you have unspoken dreams. I encourage you to love people in your circle by seeking to, dis to discover what they are and then bring the resources of a God. Maybe he will put a word on your heart to share, but certainly he has given you the avenue of prayer to pray for these unspoken dreams to come true. I invite the worship team to come on up. I want to give a few applications. First of all, to those of you who are married, I encourage you today as you have dinner, or maybe you're out on the deck in the nice sunshine this afternoon, take a look at your spouse and ask the question, honey, do you have any unspoken dreams that I don't know about? might make it for a good conversation. Because God, as people walk with him, he puts dreams in our heart. Maybe you want to talk to your children about that. As they grow up and through their teenage years, dreams start to form. But a lot of times, they're afraid to mention them. You might want to find out what those are. You know what I was reading last night in a book and uh, the author was saying the number one, re one of the main reasons people don't go for their dream is because of the criticism they will get from their family. Interesting. You might want to talk to your children. Some of you are single and you may have a circle of friends that you can ask one another and see how you can help one another along. You know, a lot of times we bury godly dreams. And sometimes it takes a while to discern between what we want and what God wants, but a lot of times, more often than we think, they're actually the same, they're in very much the same, on the same track. So I encourage you today, 
Think about how you can love those in your circle. Help them with their spoken dreams and help them with their unspoken dreams. God bless you.